There are few guitar players more iconic or influential than Mr. Richie Blackmore, uh, mostly because so many people learn the song Smoke on the Water as a first ever piece of guitar music, right? You pick up the guitar and it's become a meme now on the internet, the 035 thing, right? But people forget that Blackmore wrote so many great riffs. And if you look at some of the guitar giants from that era, like Tony Iommi or Jimmy Page, you bring those guys up and people will always talk about their amazing riffs or, you know, which solo is their favorite. But you talk about Blackmore and inevitably people are going to chuckle and be like, huh, 035, right? So I want to remind you guys about five awesome Richie Blackmore riffs. These are my favorite Blackmore riffs to play. I could probably make this about... 30 or 40 riffs long, but I'll keep it nice and short and sweet. We'll keep it to five. We're going to start with the riff from the Deep Purple song, Burn. I absolutely love the Mark III lineup of Purple, mostly because you've got David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes, two of my favorite singers, and you also have this riff. <laughs> It's just raw power epitomized to me. If you are ever playing a Stratocaster into some kind of boosted Marshall, that's the riff to play to earn you respect. And uh, a lot of these riffs that I'm going to show you, by the way, I kind of figured out as I was a teenager training my ear. So I'm sure there's plenty of inaccuracies in there. This is very much a not how to play like Richie Blackmore. And I remember hearing that riff to burn for the first time on the California Jam VHS, uh, you know, where he blows up his Marshall and they trash the stage and Glenn Hughes is just absolutely singing this crazy falsetto stuff on Space Truck and it's a really wild concert but the thing that stole the show for me is that start where they play Burn and that is one of my favorite guitar riffs of all time it's also in the key of G like Smoke on the Water another riff which is kind of a uh, you know Smoke on the Water remix you may have it is the riff from the Rainbow song Man on the Silver Mountain it kind of goes like this <laughs> And you know, you can see there's that like little finger style element. He's getting his thumb over the top. I think he's getting his thumb over the top. That's how I play it to play those like low G root notes. And it just has a really great feel to it. You know, that feels so nice under the fingers. I literally pick up a guitar all of the time and I might be just like, you know, sitting there in a vegetative state watching TV and I'll be going. Great song, Ronnie James Dio on lead vocals, absolutely killing it. So Man on the Silver Mountain would be uh, the second Blackmore riff that I absolutely love. Probably my favorite Blackmore riff out of all of these though, and the song that when I heard it, I think I was about 15 years old when I got this album. It's off the album Rainbow Rising. It's the riff to Stargazer. It was the most epic piece of rock music I'd ever heard. This was very much, uh, in my opinion, it was like Rainbow's version of Cashmere or something like that. This epic storyline. Dio's vocals are just off the chart. They're so, so good. Cozy Powell's drumming. Everything about the band is just on fire on that. And this riff took me so long to figure out uh, as a teenager. and But when I did, it kind of really opened up that whole style of guitar playing to me. Uh, what I would call the like epic 70s, 80s rock kind of thing. Uh, it again kind of goes like this. <laughs> enjoyed is this part the little where you play the minor third of the E minor scale you play the second and then you play the flat seven so you kind of play around the root note and you got the low E and then you got the seventh fret on the A string of both E but then you've got this little he also does that on the song a light in the black on the same album you know Similar sort of idea, and uh, when I was going through and figuring out Stargazer, it was like, that was a moment where I was like, 
oh, I think I get what he's doing on the rest of this album. You know, he's combining the blue scale, he's combining some chromatic stuff, and he's combining the minor scale. And that kind of just all fits together very nicely. Uh, so falling in love with Rainbow Rising, I was like, I have to hear everything Rainbow have done. And I got the next album, Long Live Rock and Roll, and there's a song Gates of Babylon on there, which was another moment for me where it was like, whoa, I didn't know that you could do this with the electric guitar. You know, he's using uh, this like harmonic minor scale and double harmonic stuff, these very exotic scales. The riff goes something like this. <laughs> Absolutely killer. You can see there's that, uh, I guess, really, it's like E Phrygian dominant. And then he slides in a little bit of the E double harmonic. Which is essentially the same as a Phrygian dominant, but you have a perfect seventh interval rather than a flat seventh. <laughs> I love his guitar solo in that as well. That's like all time top 10 for me in Gates of Babylon. Yeah, that riff to me is just so clever. It sounds like, uh, I know Richie was very influenced by like, uh, you know, gypsy violin players and things like that. And I remember seeing uh, the Machine Head classic albums thing where Roger Glover kind of makes a joke about, oh yeah, you know, Richie heard some riff on like his little radio from Hungary or something. And he wrote, I think they're talking about the song Pictures from Home, another great riff, but Gates of Babylon, to me, is like, that's the, the pinnacle, that's the jewel in the crown for creative use of exotic scales in rock guitar. Absolutely awesome stuff. So there's three rainbow riffs in there. There's one more deep purple riff, which I think really sums up Richie's style. And when I was putting together this list and try, trying to think of, you know, if I had to pick five riffs that I would recommend to people, uh, this one's actually from the Perfect Strangers album. It's from the first track, Knocking at Your Back Door. The reason I chose this was, uh, this was probably maybe the third or fourth Deep Purple song I ever heard in my life. You know, obviously learnt Smoke on the Water was one of the first songs I ever learnt how to play, and there's Black Knight, and there's, uh, you know, some other stuff off the Machine Head album, like... <laughs> This one I think is just so cool because it sort of like Richie rolls all his tricks into this one riff. I think it goes something like this. Um, let's see. <laughs> I love that. It's in the key of B this time, but you have these, uh, you know, again, the classic Blackmore inverted power chords. But he's also doing something which uh, he kind of invented 80s metal with his style, you know, where using not only these inverted power chords, but you're also doing these little thirds, these little uh, dyads here, this kind of thing. And then think of guys like Eddie Van Halen took it to the next level. And then you've got like the whole 80s school, your George Lynch, Warren Demartini, uh, Vivian Campbell, all these kind of... <laughs> J.K. Lee, all these kind of guys, you know, obviously, I imagine at the time, Blackmore would have been like omnipresent. It was almost impossible not to be influenced by the way he wrote riffs. And uh, certainly all of these riffs were really, really influential on me growing up as a guitar player. Uh, as an example, if you wanted to hear something that I wrote, if you go and listen to the Ragdoll song, Foot to the Floor, it's also in the key of B. It's using a lot of these inversions and little thirds and dyads and stuff like that. It goes like this. <laughs> And you can sort of see the influence of guys like Martini and Van Halen in there with the little sus four chords. 
when I wrote that, I was just kind of thinking Blackmore. You know, it's got the inverted power chords. It's got the little diodes. It's got the thumb over the top stuff. And if it wasn't for working out so many of those rainbow songs and deep purple songs in my teens and working them out by ear and, you know, really listening closely and absorbing Richie's style, um, I definitely wouldn't have turned out to play guitar the way I play guitar. Those things are very much a part of my DNA. And hopefully... That gives you uh, five great songs to go and listen to and really get beyond the meme with Richie Blackmore. You know, Smoke on the Water is an iconic song, but he kind of, uh, he, he wrote so many other great riffs which are worth remembering and worth jamming on. So let me know your five favorite Richie Blackmore riffs in the comments because I'm sure there's a bunch that I've missed. You know, I mentioned Pictures from Home. There's Kill the King. There's A Line in the Black. There's uh, all of Deep Purple's Machine Head album. There's the earlier stuff like Speaking. <laughs> Just so much killer stuff, you know, when it comes to like the number of great riffs somebody's written in their career, uh, it would be really hard to top Richie Blackmore, you know, you got maybe Jimmy Page and Tony Iommi would be the only other guys in the rock guitar sphere who could compare to someone like Richie. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, I'll see you next time.